if you're considering Crowdfunder, it's a really straightforward piece of software. It's got a free trial, good support that can help you troubleshoot issues. And I'll give you the overview, show you how it works. And you can use that to make a decision if it's right for your project. It's official uh, app in the App Store. You can start clicking Add App. We'll add it to the store, start your trial, and get you in the onboarding process. And the finished result looks something like this. So this is Shopify's Dawn theme. It's just a, uh, a dev store, demo store we made with an example product. I got seven hours to get in on this. Uh, and there's 264 other people who've done that. Like that, there's powerful motivation in that. Let's say I want to show you uh, what that install process looks like. Now, if you're on an online store 2.0 theme, which you probably are at this point, and that's the, the current stuff, uh, it gives you an app embed that lets you choose where it goes on your product page. That makes, makes life pretty easy. So like down at the bottom, uh, you click add section, and then under app blocks, you'll see Crowdfunder down there. And so in this store, uh, we've got Crowdfunder up here. I can hide the widget, there it goes away, just a regular product page without it, add it back in, boom, there it is. And so you can grab it, rearrange it in an online store 2.0, a theme, put it wherever you want that makes sense. I like to put it right after the price and before the add to cart button. So it's part of the product form. I think that that's a, an ideal scenario and makes sense. Um, this is a single variant product. If you do multivariant, it'll work with that too. And you can also do stuff like, you know, um, you create a, a variant option called backer level. And let's say it's got like gold, silver, bronze. You can have those be uh, your backer levels. I do like a very traditional uh, Kickstarter style crowdfunding campaign. Let's take a look in a live store, how this thing works, how we'd set up a campaign and get started with it. So here we've got the Apple load and it's going to ask us, Hey, which theme do you want to do install in? And it'll default to the publish theme or you could do an unpublished theme, but here we're going to put it in our, our live theme and all right, we're going to overwrite this. It's going to update for us. And this is the old version. This is online store 1.0, uh, this theme. It's going to automatically place it for us. And so this automatic installer almost always works, but not always. And so if it doesn't, uh, just reach out to our support and we'll take care of it for you. And here you can set your default settings on CSS. I'm going to skip that and go straight to creating a campaign. And so the first thing it's going to do is tell you to pick a product. Here's my wife, meet me at the castle. Let's do this one. Oh no, but it's told us we've got some issues. Oh no, it's not going to work right. So how do we fix it? How do we set up a product, product for uh, crowdfunding? So we're going to go, here's my product. And I don't necessarily want to mess with this one on my first go. Let's do practice. We're going to make a copy. And we're just going to call this one um, pre-order campaign exclusive shirt and I want to copy everything over set as active go for it duplicate product and so the simplicity the cleverness of crowdfunder is the way it calculates it looks at inventory so if you're selling a pre-order you don't have inventory that is our assumption you have the inventory it's not a pre-order now is it so we always assume that your inventory starts at zero and then that you track the inventory and that is uh and you can have multiple variants and let's say someone buys a small you're in and you're at zero your inventory is now negative one for small t-shirts crowdfunder loops through all your variants adds up all the the inventory and then multiplies that by the revenue for each inventory or each variant and then uh multiplies it by negative one so that we don't have a negative value so we got to get set up for that. So on our variants, we have to track quantity and we have to continue selling one out of stock. Fabulous. And we have to set our inventory to zero. It's already zero here. So that's set. And then if you've got one variant, you're fine. Your product's good to go at this point. If you have multiple variants, you got to make sure you do it for each one. Now, if later you see like your crowdfunder values have reset or gone negative. 
Guaranteed, it's because these inventory values changed. And like sometimes, inventory software will do that on you. So we're just going to go ahead and switch this out, try quantity, continue selling, and our inventory is zero. And when you first create a campaign, Crowdfunder will, will check it for you. It'll make sure you get this right, and it's not going to let you continue if you don't have it right. After the fact, if it changes and it's wrong, we don't check for that. Uh, so now let's head back to our app. Let me just search it up here. Crowd. Now, if you've just created your product and you don't see it in the list, uh, it takes a moment for Shopify's catch it, caching to catch up. And so usually if you wait a second or you just search for it, it'll pop up. So there it is. Click our pre-order campaign. Now, earlier I mentioned there were two modes for how you show the goal and what you're trying to raise. Currency, I think this is the way to go. So that's like, we want to raise, you know, we want to raise $1,500. We want to raise $10,000. And whatever currency your store uses, this will observe that. Uh, or you could do units sold. So let's say we just want to sell a minimum quantity. We need a minimum of 100 shirts to get them printed. And so we're just trying to pre-sell 100 shirts. Simple. But for this, we're going to go with currency. And I'm going to say, keep it simple. I just want to raise 500 bucks. And... Uh, for a campaign to work, I think 60 days is usually like the ideal time frame. Too short, it's tough. Too long, people lose interest. I like 60 days. And so we're just going to jump it November 23rd. Oh, phenomenal. And then we've got advanced options. And so you could choose to tag the product. It's just for like an administration thing. I like that. Um, set our time zone. That's for so our timer works. We could set the progress bar color want like a nice purple color. Uh, you can hide the add to cart button conditionally. Hide if not funded, don't hide it, hide it. Uh, you can hide it, that's when time expires or if the campaign is fully funded. So that's a nice way to try and, like if you wanna make sure you don't oversell, you can use these features. Now the hard part here is to make this work. You need to be able to put your CSS selector in there. If that scares you, just ask us. We could set that up for you. And using that same method, we can also change the button text. So your add to cart button on only your campaign doesn't have to be an add to cart button. You could make it, you could say pre-order now. That might be a, a nice way to do it. And same deal. It uses a CSS selector. Again, if that's scary, we'll assist you with it. Um, there's even some instructions here on, hey, how to find your selector. Uh, all of the labels that the app uses they have defaults. I like the defaults. They're also all meant, for, you know, opinionated uh, and meant and written in U.S. English. So you can change every single one of them uh, by changing the label and setting it in here. If you leave these blank, it'll just use the defaults. And so, all right, we're going to save our campaign. Boom, it's done. Now there's a thing up here, new, faster campaign creation. All those def settings we saw, you can actually set a default for those. So some people run uh, dozens of campaigns at once, or they run a lot of campaigns in succession. So you know what you want as your settings. You just set it once, or they could be different per campaign. We try to keep it flexible. Uh, and we've got, uh, when you click campaigns, here you can see them. And here, I like this. I thought this was cool. We added the progress bar in here, and it'll sh uh, group them. So you, it, by default, only shows active, finished, all. And then in settings, these are the default campaign settings. Um, and once a campaign's running, you could change it if you want. You can always go in here and edit it however you want, click save. And so now that we got that thing going, let's go view our product and see if it worked. There's our shirt. View. Oh my gosh, it worked. How cool is that? Wow. Super nifty. Calculated, loaded everything up. And see, uh, if you are, if you're a little dangerous with web development like me, you can use CSS to customize this thing. We wrote it so that it will be perfectly friendly and happy to accept your CSS. We also wrote it with minimal CSS so that it would always attempt to adopt the styles used in the theme. So like you can see in here, it's got the colors, the font size, the fonts and the font sizes all right and match the theme and we didn't have to set them it just picks those up on its own uh, and again if you need assistance with that you could contact our support we'll help you with it 
And so from here, it just works like a regular product. The store doesn't know that this is, there's something special about this product. It's just a regular product. Uh, and here, let's, you want to see how this works. Like, let's say uh, we did this fundraiser locally. We started it you know, at uh, our church group and we sold a few there. And we can actually go in. You know, I sold three smalls and I sold two larges. And so we're going to hit save on that. Notice I set those numbers to negative. Now, if I go and refresh my campaign, well, we could see, ah, I'm already 20% of the way there because I have five supported. I've raised $100 of my $500 goal. Lovely. So it works, works pretty well. Now, what if I want to make this a regular product again? You know, my campaign was successful. Now it's a regular product. Good to go. Uh, we would, you could create a new product or you could uh, delete the crowdfunder campaign in crowdfunder and that widget will disappear. And then in the product here, you just correct your inventory. And so if we go back into crowdfunder, I go, you know what? I did the wrong product or I was successful in funding. I want to get rid of it. I just click delete. Campaign was successfully deleted. And there, Shopify's cleared its cash. Now it's, it's back to normal. And then obviously, like, I'd have to change the name of this product. Um, and as far as, like, explaining that it's a pre-order... You need to explain that. So I would definitely 100% uh, explain the estimated shipping date in your product description. That is a must. I would put uh, pre-order in the, the product title. That way, uh, the fact that it's a pre-order will appear in the cart, in the checkout, in all the notification emails. It's just a nice way to handle it. And then I would really make sure to, to explain, like, this is your pre-order. This is what you're getting. This is when we expect it to ship. Put all that necessary info in your product description. Okay, hope that helps. And uh, try, try Crowdfunder. <laughs>